Five was interesting now in order to exchange these bonds, but I was rather skeptical about it. And unfortunately, rook c2 also does not work. Maybe I was not forced to exchange of on f4, but uh, I don't know. I did not see anything convincing there. Now rook b8 is not a real realistic winning attempt, and there is no mate after g5, king f5. This pawn, is, this past pawn will be very strong if black takes here and white takes on b7. So I decided not to play this. I played uh, rook c6 instead. And now uh, Radek should have played uh, rook b3. Or this is at least what I think about the position. But uh, okay. Black remains a bit more active, but it is difficult to improve this position because the king is not playing yet. And if black could exchange one pair of rooks, it would have been advantages for him. But I don't know how to do that, actually. Uh, he played rook d1, which is not a bad move either. So the, this pawn is on another square, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, perhaps on g4. Yes. Can it be on g4? Mm, looks like not. Okay. No, maybe. I'm fairly sure that it's not here. Or maybe it is. I, I don't know really. Okay, so maybe it is after all. Okay, so rook d1, rook f6 check. After king g5, black can even play the flashy move. Uh, h6, because it's impossible to take the rook. That's a very nice mate now. Oh, and if white retreats his king, then I can take the pawn. And if he takes on h6, then I can take here. Actually, black, might, black must also be careful in order not to get checkmated uh, along the eighth rank. But uh, I believe that should be winning somehow. I calculated some lines after rook f1. I have check. I have a check here, and if white plays on takes b7, then I give a check and take it. And uh, there is a threat of mate in one. So h6, h4, check. King uh, rook g3. It's all over. Yes. If white takes here, then I take b7, and then there is mate in 2, for example. I take here and here. Oh. This was fine, but uh, of course Radek did not go for this. And he played king g3, which is probably still correct. And uh, black has some edge, but I believe the end game to be defensible. Without any major problems. So. King g3. Now I grab the pawn. Rook takes b7 and the rook e5. That's the point, actually. What was still short of time? Uh, sorry? Still Thank you very much. Yes, uh, and the rook was still on d1. So after I took here, he played rook d7 and I played rook e5. And only now rook b5. That's the point. Uh, so uh, Radek might have missed something around here. He was short of time. And actually, I believe that after rook c1, white should be able to defend his position rather easily because if black takes here, then white's rooks are, are rather active. And this rook uh, fulfills a good defensive task by defending two pawns, but uh, I don't know how to activate the, the, the other rook. So, uh, even if black takes it here, white can try rook a7, and this check should not be so dangerous, actually. I believe that white can even give up this pawn uh, and exchange it for this one at some lines, but white even does not have to do that. I believe it to be a draw. Yes, that's a, uh, white took on b5, which is probably not very good. And now he played uh, king f2. And now it seems that b4 is strong, but it's not true. 
actually, I'm not sure at which time did he give a check on B8, because he could have given it at any time. So I believe that Gf2 was played first, and B4 um, was not played because, uh, sorry, B4 was played really, but Rook E6 is not good because now White can save a draw by playing D7, King E3. B4, King D4, B3, King C5, B2. Now white takes. Black promotes his pawn. And white plays King A7. Black checks somehow. But black is unable to get any farther. Uh, farther, I mean. Uh, so I believe this is a, an easy draw, an immediate draw. So. This is why I had to play b4 and uh, not a rook e6, even though it looked tempting. So uh, I played b4, king e3. Uh, actually, king e3 did not happen, I think. Yes, it happened. It happened? Really? Okay. King e2. King e2 happened. So oh, this this, yeah, this is e2. the difference, yeah. because after king e3 I cannot play rook d6 again for the same reason, because there is a rook b8, so I think it was a bit more accurate because it limits my possibilities a bit. I'm forced to play b3, but uh, it, it does not m change anything. It doesn't matter because b3 is good anyway, so I could play b3 now, but uh, rook d6 is correct. Now it uh, uh, gives me more possibilities, but unfortunately, the additional possibilities are not good, are not as good as the game continuation. At least that's what I believe. D7. White has to advance the pawn uh, sooner or later in order to get it with his king below the pawn. So B7, Rook B6, King D2. Now I'm not forced to play b3 uh, immediately. Actually, I was quite disappointed after king d2 because I spent some time sitting at the board because my opponent uh, had, my opponent had been short of time since the move 25 or something like this, and uh, I wanted to go to the restroom. <laughs> but he played this move quickly, and I understood that it was an important moment now that I had about six various plans how to continue, <laughs> and I had to sit at the board and think about it. And finally, I decided that B3 cannot be a bad move uh, for the reason that if I play H5 or anything like this, and now I ignore the threat of King B3, then White again has this idea, which I have shown. I hope to black off of some tempe now, but uh, maybe one, maybe two. Uh, but I wanted to show the idea. The tempe on the king side have no importance at this line. So in the end, I realized that I can play b3. I played it and I in a way before my opponent succeeded in executing his next move, which is quite obvious. So king c1. And now I had to think about it. Actually, b2 looks quite uh, tempting, but it's not good. Because now, after some move like uh, h5, white can play uh, rook e8. By the way, I cannot play king f6 immediately because of this. And the position should be drawn relatively easily. The material <laughs> will be equal. Will remain equal. OK, so h5. And so the problem is that at this position, um, White succeeds in taking the pawn, and the, the pawn and the game is drawn. I will not show it now because there are too many other interesting uh, lines. So I would just like to emphasize that the difference between such a position is that at this type of position, I can play rook d7 and uh, attack these pawns on the second rank, because my pawn is placed on a different rank. So this is the difference and the reason why I should not hurry uh, with playing b2. Actually, the endgame is quite complicated, and uh, I believe that h5 was a correct de decision. I could also play g5, and it also 
that um, sense, but uh, in general, GFAF should be better because it is uh, more uh, more flexible. Because after G5, I cannot play King F6 because of Rook H8, and I believe that White can even play G3 here, and he can try to achieve such a pawn structure. And now. Uh, maybe f5 works here. Uh, actually, I haven't considered it, but uh, I, I had such a position in mind, and uh, this should be a draw because white just wait, and uh, black cannot improve his position. So this was not the best way how to play it actually. Um, so I played h5, uh, and my idea was to push h4 ev eventually, but I was not sure about the objective quality of this move. So after in b2, I probably would have spent some 20 minutes thinking because I have three possibilities here: king f6, uh, g5, and h4. Uh, in fact, black should try to keep this pawn on f7 because uh, after rook f8 it is defended and I can safely take uh, on uh, b7, I mean in lines like this. But the problem is that if I try to advance my king, I can sometimes finish in such a position which might even be lost. I think it is a draw now, but there is quite an unpleasant breakthrough and I probably have to give up. Uh, I definitely have to give up the rook because this loses because why does a rook h8 rook takes b7 rook h7 check so this was one of the many problems with the position and actually i believe that g3 should suffice for a draw but i'm not sure i don't even remember what i calculated here and I missed the idea of f5. I only spotted it later. So I'm not entirely sure about the quality of this move, but it looked preferable to me because even if white does not hurry with playing h4, he can try something like this, and now h4 somehow does not work because white can take it and play rook d8, rook d4, and regain this pawn. So black should make some neutral moves like rook b4, rook b5, and to wait till white runs out of moves. But white does not run out of them so easily. He can improve his position and then to give up the pawn, as I have already shown.